Hi, so good evening everybody. My name's Charlotte Whittle and for those of you I'm yet to meet, um, I am an independent consultant and a regional vice president with Arbon, about to become an executive regional vice president which is super exciting um, because the amazing Elaine Evans um, and her fabulous team are powering forward to become a brand new region. Um, so that's really exciting. Now the purpose of tonight's call really um, is a leadership call for the people in my region who are districts or area managers who are looking to increase their knowledge and skills around leadership um, because basically that's what Arbonne is. Once you've got the nuts and bolts and you're able to follow the system and you've kind of got yourself to district so you've like scrambled up if you will to that first level and I feel like at that point you can kind of see then a bit more clearly what's going on. And basically, the next level, if you will, is about developing yourself and your leadership skills so that you can help other people to scramble up to district two with you. That's basically how you build to region and to nation. It's by helping other people to become district managers and at district manager level then helping them to develop their leadership. So this is quite new for us in our region really to be focusing on leadership but I just feel that it's crucial because I do remember going back to being a district manager and feeling like the things that I had to do and what we're doing needed to change. So I guess the first point of my call if you're writing stuff down is nothing needs to change. At district level, at area level, and even at region level, the how stays the same. The how you build an Arbonne business stays exactly the same. And to build an Arbonne business, just to remember and recap, you're finding people to talk to, you're sharing the business presentation and the product information, and you're following up and getting people set up for success. And that's all you're doing over and over and over again. Now, something I feel really strongly about is the fact that in this business, we get paid to sponsor wide. You get paid on infinity width. And that tells us something. If our success plan was the type of success plan, and there are different success plans out there, if ours was the type that you... Um, you were getting paid a lot in your depth, then that would tell you maybe I need to not be going wide. But ours is a success plan that pays you infinity width. So with my logical head on, what that tells me is they want us to go wide. You can sponsor direct to you for now until forever and get paid on that. And at the different levels of management, you get paid more and more on that width. You get paid more and more on those consultants direct to you. So for those people that are newish in my region that don't really know me, what you need to know is I am so wide. I am super, super, super wide. Arbonne is the only place where you want to be wide, <laughs> like the only place in your life, and I am. I have sponsored over 50 consultants direct to me. Not all are actively working in the business, which people don't. Like, you need to understand that. In Vegas, they talked about it's easier to give birth than to resurrect the dead. So if you've sponsored someone direct to you and they're not ringing you, they're not texting you, they're not coming to meetings, the, the dead in your business, basically. Get off the dead horse. Leave it alone. Like, there's some people still trying to ride horses and there's flies buzzing around. That's what they said in Vegas when we were all laughing our head off. But that's the reality because not everyone's got what it takes. You might be someone that's like me. So for those of you that have seen me present, I know one of my strengths is people buy me. So they go, yeah, I want to do whatever you're doing. But then they don't have the self-discipline or the self-belief or the desire to even build this. So they say, yeah but then they quit on themselves. And one of the things that I really learned in the beginning that I want you all to know is, if somebody quits, it's nothing to do with you. So just put that in your head right now and hear my voice telling you that right now. There is nothing you did or didn't do that made somebody quit. Because whether someone's quit on you now, or someone in the future quits on you, you need to de detach yourself emotionally from that. 
because it's irrelevant. I knew from the minute I heard the Arbonne opportunity, I was going to be an executive national vice president. So did each one of you on this call. You all know it. And so you'll never quit. So you know it's nothing to do with your sponsor. You know it's a personal decision. And so it's the same if you've sponsored somebody. They either will or they won't. We are not that important in this at all. We're just the messenger. We're just the person sharing the information. And Yvonne Dixon says it, and I love it, the cream will rise to the top. People that want this will make it work. So you've got to detach yourself emotionally from the outcome. Now, in order to move from consultant level and to move through to become um, a district, an area, a region, and a nation, because I can see nation right there and I know what it takes, um, what you need to do is really develop your skills as a leader. But the core of that, and I'm just looking, Amy Trevoy is the, the one that's been in the business the longest. I believe the core of that is leading by example. I believe that my guys in my team know what to do because I just do it and I show them. They knew that when we were going region, I was sponsoring the most people. They knew I was bonus in my district mid-month. They knew that I was walking my talk. And going nation, it will be exactly the same thing. There's not going to be like me getting on people's cases for what they're doing and what they're not doing to go nation. I will just be sponsoring millions of people. And hoping that that inspires you all to do the same. And so you've got to know that. You've got to be in massive activity. If you want people to be duplicating what you're doing. If your team are not sponsoring, you're not sponsoring enough. That's the reality. They're not seeing you bring loads of people into this business. There are some people that think that that's intimidating. They need to work on their mindset. It's not intimidating. The reason why we cheer success in this business is because it inspires people and shows them what's possible. So you want to get into the habit of sponsoring as many people as you can. And the reality is that's by talking to as many people as you can every day. And I guarantee that each and every one of you will underestimate the amount of people you need to speak to. You'll completely underestimate it. I think that I was very unique because I realized that I had to speak to a lot of people. But I think that's because with a social work background, I knew I could have a caseload of 40 and only one would really make any changes. So I was used to doing a lot of stuff for a very small impact. And I think it's the same with this. I knew I'd have to speak to an awful lot of people to A, sponsor them and B, you know, them then become leaders in the business. So where, they, where people say that you've got to speak to 10 people for one to join your business, I also believe you've got to sponsor 10 people for one to be a rock star. That's my belief. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for rock stars. That's what's going to help you become Ian Pritchard, well, your own version of him, where your income is residual, like really residual. Um, you've got to also, I believe be thinking a bit differently. So leadership thinking is a bit differently, different than, than when you come in as a consultant. And I appreciate that there are a lot of people that are very quickly getting to district. So it, it's developing this thinking quite quickly. But you can do it because it's a decision. It's a decision to think differently. Because what you've got to remember is the minute you sponsor one person, it's no longer about you. So you've got to put all of your head trash as I call it, in the bin. It's got to go out the way because you, it, you owe it to that new person to be leading by example. So you can't afford that mind chatter to get in your way so that you're not doing the do. You can't have that. So leaders just think slightly different. Leaders think they see solutions where other people see problems. So yesterday we talked about it in the Evans area um, group that, that we've got. Um, and so some of you might have heard this, but I just want to share it. So yesterday was a really good example, flash by day. And somebody happened to say, I'm not sure that she'll be able to do 250 pounds a day. Now a leader wouldn't think like that. A leader would think, how can I show this person how they can do a 250 pound order today? How can I get on the phone with that PC and help them to ring around their friends 
and tell them about the liquid foundation they love. Tell them about the mascara that they love. Get a couple of orders from their friends, put it all through themselves, and they're going to get themselves over 100 quid worth of free products today by ordering. That's how a leader thinks. That's how I think the minute I see a flash pad. That's why I get so excited. Because I know that I can help my preferred clients get some free product. And I also know that by doing that, I'm helping them reach out to their network. And I've then got a conversation in the pipeline about basically you're doing what I do. You're basically being an Arbonne consultant right now. You're just doing it for free products instead of a paycheck. So I see Flash by Day as a huge opportunity. I would never see it costing £250 as an issue. It would never cross my mind that it was an issue because I think like a leader. The same with things like um, somebody saying they're not sure it's the right time for them to join the business. I see a solution in that because I then want to sit down with them again for a copy and I want to talk to them about how they would know it was the right time. So I want to like dig a little bit so how they would know. And what I would do it would be letting them know that they've now found two occasions to meet with me. Do they think they could find, find a third to meet with me? And probably they could. So actually, three times they've been able to meet with me. Could they find three occasions to meet with somebody else to share this information? Yeah, probably. Oh, right, well, you've probably got time then. Even within everything else that they've got going on in their lives, I want to do that. And again, that's twofold. Building more of a relationship with them, getting more of an understanding. And also, I'm helping them to see how everyone's got issues like this. So where people would see that as a problem, oh, she says she's not got time right now. I see that as an amazing thing. Let me come and sit with you and find out some more. So you always want to be thinking, is the way that my head is seeing this, this right now, is it seeing it as an issue? Or am I seeing it as a leader and finding a solution? Now, we've all got different solutions to problems. And that's the thing you've got to see. Your job is not to solve problems for everyone. Your job is just to see how you, the leader, can see a solution for yourself to move it forward. So then your consultants in your team see that you're moving forward. I don't ever feel the need to solve a problem within my team for people that things have gone wrong. I want to help give them a solution so they can solve it themselves because we're all independent and you've got to see what you're doing as that. If you're solving something directly to you and you're showing other people how to do it, they're more likely to duplicate than you telling them that this is the way they need to fix that problem. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making sense? I hope so. Um, the next thing I believe with taking your business to the next level is Arbonne cannot be a sometimes thing. It's got to be either part-time or full-time, but it can't be sometimes. You've got to make a conscious decision at the start of each week and remember, I used to work full time all the way up to area. You've got to make a decision about how much time you've got to dedicate to Arbonne and then you work it in that time. You actually really work it. Now, for me, I knew I had to carve time every day to grow this the way I wanted it to grow. Every single day I needed time. And I believe if you're serious about building this business, you've got to carve out that time. You've got to work smart. You've got to share the business opportunity with people in that time. And you've got to share the products with people in that time. And you've got to spend 90% of your time on your own business and building your own business. And the other 10 is on your team. Even if they're a brand new direct, they get 10% of my time. Now at Region, it's 80-20. You know, sometimes it shifts a little bit. Sometimes it shifts and I do a little bit more. But the majority of my time is still on prospecting and still on launching brand new business builders. That's what I'm doing the majority of my time. It doesn't change. Like Debbie Neal says, the game remains the same. And that's all it is. It remains exactly the same. But you just... There are district managers that will stay at district that have been district managers since I joined Arbonne in other teams. They've always been a district manager and they always will be a district manager. 
because they're not willing to do anything different. They're willing to put in the time they've got right now, not putting any more time. They're willing to put in the effort that they're putting in right now, not anymore. And they're willing to sponsor the same amount of people that they sponsored up to now. Your business will only ever grow to where you're at. And I'm going to tell you something right now, which is hilarious and makes me cringe to like cringe. I sent Ian Pritchard a message when I was a district manager, sent him a message saying, I didn't know what I was doing wrong because I was doing what everyone else said that I should be doing. And I really wanted to grow my business to area and to region, but I was sponsoring and I was doing personal development and I was attending stuff and I was happy with the amount of time I was spending on my Arbonne business. And he said, get happy with being a district manager then. Ugh. I remember sitting in bed like, oh God. But he was right. Like he was, he was right because... Whatever time you're putting in now has got you to where you are now. Now, there are some people that got really quickly to district, right? So what you're doing right now is awesome. Just keep doing it. The people that have been sat at district longer, unfortunately, this is going to sting. But what you're, the results that you've got right now, they're because of what you've been doing up to now. So what you've got to realize is you're just going to have to do a little bit more. And honestly, it's not loads more. It isn't loads more, but it is a little bit more if you want to move to the next level. I mean, bless Elaine, who's trying to complete region. I don't think she slept for a week, but you don't because it's a lot more when you go in region. But to go district to area, I mean, like Jackie will say, like she's just consistently been doing quite a bit. And that's why she did district area qual area. Because she's just been consistently, would you say 10 to 15 hours, Jackie, or maybe a bit more? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the Rabban business, I know that there are district managers in my region that do not spend 10 to 15 hours on this. I know. They spend 10 to 15 hours. Shall I tell you what they spend 10 to 15 hours doing? Is it in this book? I don't even know which book it was in. They spend 10 to 15 hours thinking about what to post on Facebook, looking for a really good picture to put on Facebook, thinking about reading, looking for somewhere really good to read and a time to read, thinking about the 100 list, thinking that they should update the 100 list, thinking about whether or not to ring someone and deciding whether or not it's the right time to ring, ring someone, thinking about whether or not to go out to find someone to speak to, whether or not it's the right time, then thinking about what they're going to have for lunch before they go and do that, then thinking about when they get out there, whether or not to ask for somebody's phone number, and when they do get the phone number, then they spend ages thinking about whether or not to ring them. That's what a lot of people might be spending 10 to 15 hours doing. What they're not doing is spending 10 to 15 hours contacting people, sitting down with people, sharing the business with people. And that is how you build a business. So I think it's interesting because a lot of time you can think, oh my God, I've been doing Arbonne all day. But you've not actually been doing Arbonne. You've been thinking about doing Arbonne all day. The reality of doing Arbonne is sharing our business and products with people, that's it. And it's hilarious because we've all been there. Seriously, we've all been there. But what you get is really good at, I'm really good now at, I have my income producing activity in my diary, it's scheduled in, and the rest of the time I don't think about Arbonne. <laughs> like, I go about my life, and I just do Arbonne in the chunks of time that I'm producing income. And it was, for me, when I was working full time, it was the same, because I was at work all day, I could only do Arbonne when I was working. I wasn't in a position with my job to prospect at work, like, heroin addicts don't wash. So I wasn't in that position. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. So don't get caught in a trap of thinking about Arbonne too much. Just do it. Um, the, the next thing really for me that's just important for you to know is I don't believe district managers need to be doing Zooms with their team, coaching with their team, unless, my exception is unless you're Jackie, because Jackie's team is huge. Like if you guys saw the size of Jackie's team and how quickly it got there, she needed to be able to do that to leverage her time, otherwise she'd be running around everywhere. But normal districts, like I was, I wrote a training once. I became a district manager and wrote a training and invited all my team round because I was going to train them. No one turned up. <laughs> I'd wasted a full day writing a training and no one came. Because why would they come? 
I wasn't the evidence yet. And that's the reality. And sometimes, like, you know, like, we want to get there. Like, I've always been the one, like, how do I get to train on that stage? Do the numbers, do the volume, and you can. And that's the reality. So you have to sometimes, like, remove the wanting to train and go, I need to just keep doing the activity and plug your people into the people that are training. The reality is there is so much training out there. We are trained to death. They can get YouTube videos, sound clouds, watch bloody re blooming recordings of videos, read books. They can do all sorts of training and they don't need most of it. At district level, you don't need to be doing it. You just need to be going out sponsoring and leading by example. Here's what I'm going to tell you. And Emma, I appreciate you are three weeks into your business and you're a district manager. I do not want to scare you, but I want it in your brain because that's where it should be. Bonus in your district is crucial. I can't even tell you how important it is. 5,005 new signups. And if you are bringing at least two new consultants a month into your business and you're launching them and you're showing them how to move products and to sponsor and you're sponsoring a couple of preferred clients, you'll bonus your district. And I remember hearing that over and over and over again and it was in Vegas, two thousand and not last year, not the, the, the one before, not last, not the one just gone, not the year before, but the year before that. I remember going, I can bonus my district. All of these consultants that are flaky and not turning up for my training, <laughs> that I would do it. All of them that are flaky, that are not doing anything, they have no bearing on me bonusing my district. I can bonus my district. And you need to have that in your head. You bonus your district. Nobody else bonuses your district. It's you. And you can be personally responsible for that 5,000 QB a month. Personally. I will have my district bonus wrapped up by the end of next week. It's my priority. Bonus my district. So you lot know that I am personally bringing new into my business. There were two months where I decided I thought it should be a good thing to just work with everyone in my business. Uh, February and March. Was it, Amy? I'm not sure. I like set it out. I'm like, I'm not going to sponsor. I'm going to work with all of you. I was A, mortified that my name wasn't on the district manager board. And B, I had the worst months ever in my business because it's not beneficial. What's beneficial is you seeing that you've got a regional vice president that earns a district bonus or area bonus and a regional bonus. And as soon as she's a nation, she'll be earning that. That's what's beneficial. And that's what's beneficial to your team. You want your team going, oh my God, Amy Trevor is amazing. Look at her smashing a district bonus, getting ready to go area qual. That's what you want. People do not do what you say. They do what you do. And that's what you've got to understand that district is massive. All we're doing is teaching people how to duplicate the system. When you bring them in, you set them up for success. That is why Jackie's team is so huge and I keep talking about her because she's so simple. We're going to have launches. She's not simple. Her system's simple. We're going to have launches really quickly. I'm going to teach you how to do them and I'm going to teach you how to do a one-to-one because -one you're going to listen to me do it. And then off you go. And she's, she's speaking, but she's sponsoring. And they're copying exactly what she's doing. And I think I can be bold enough to say, I think that's because when she joined, I said very clearly, get me in front of your people as soon as. And you did, didn't you? And then that's what she's saying to her people. Get me in front of your people as soon as. If you're saying that to people and they're not doing it next, sponsor. I think... And I've said this, and Amy knows this, I've said this for a long time, like, I honestly think I can tell flakiness is really bad. I'm not into flakiness. If I give someone a book to read and they don't read it, flaky. If I ask them to listen to an audio and they don't do it, flaky. And if I ask them to book a launch and they don't do it, flaky. Just keep sponsoring. They might come round eventually, but just keep sponsoring. The key to build into the next level is to just keep sponsoring. There is no secret in our bond. Develop your leadership skills so that you can show people how to solve problems so that you think that way and you don't get dragged into problem thinking. Protect this. The battle is won and lost here. Protect this by doing your personal development, building your self-esteem and your self-worth and knowing that you 
are awesome. Louise Fletcher, you are awesome. Jackie Mintley, you are awesome. Emma Trevor, you are awesome. And Emma, you are awesome. Know that and show people that. Over and over again, show them that. Do not be afraid to shine your light. Shine as brightly as you can shine because that is what inspires people. I used to be terrified to shine because I thought people didn't like me if I shone. Because in the real world, the other world, you get bullied at high school if you shine. And I was horrifically. And in social work world, people do not like it because you might take their job. Shining is bad in the real world, but let me tell you in Arbonne, shining is the best thing ever. Because then sidelines start edifying you. Sidelines start going, oh my God, she's amazing. You've got the best sponsor ever. Sidelines start screaming for you and then your team believe in you and you believe in you. So you want to know that what you're doing is good and right, but you want to keep doing it over and over and over again. And that is how you'll build. The final thing that I just want to tell you, because we've laughed about it a little bit in the WhatsApp today, I put it out to the universe. I needed more men in my business. Very quickly, I've got an abundance of men flying at me. Know how powerful your vision and your intention is. Me and Carl are laughing hysterically because I said to Carl, you need to start thinking things because you're so magic. Because we're so good at visualizing and writing in our gratitude every single day about what we want and what we intend. It comes dead fast. He only said two weeks ago he wanted to live in the barn in the middle of nowhere, up a path. So we started visualizing it and bloody hell, here it is and we're going to move into it. Like it happens that fast when you get really good at it. So know that if you're focusing on this team you've not got and this business that's not growing and this district that's not bonusing, guess what you're going to get? No team. No growing business and no bonus. You focus on what you have got, an amazing opportunity, a new day to speak to new people, a, a, a two weeks left of the month to bring awesomeness in. You make it clear that by the end of this month, you will have 5,000 QBs and you will be overjoyed and celebrating 10 foot tall and bulletproof because you did it. You focus on that every single day and I swear to you by the end of the month, it'll happen. You just got to like... Believe it, you cannot ever give this a second to have doubt. If you start, you know that chatter? Oh yeah, but 5,000 is a lot. And oh, I've not really got anyone that's going to join. And oh, ah, I'm, I'm saying I'm doing it, but I don't really think I am. When that comes in, pick up a book or put a SoundCloud on. Don't let it. You cannot give that, that fear a, a second to breathe it keeps coming up for me because i'm saying we're going nation by november and it keeps coming up that <gasps> but then i'm like no absolutely no because if we say we're doing it we're doing it put a sound cloud on and and carry on charlotte glenn, i shared it in our uh, thrive nations facebook glenn rob posted the most amazing post fear fear is not real it's not it just appears real. That's it. It's just your doubt appearing real and it's wrong. Because cause really, really, there's nothing to be scared of. It's only our bond. Like, we're not saving lives. We're just, well, we are saving lives. Like, of course we're saving lives. But, but like, don't be scared. Write 5,000 QVs down. Write down what you're bringing into your business. Write down how you're going to feel when it's the end of the month and you're celebrating Jackie, unfortunately, you can't write that down, love. You've got to write down a bit bigger than that. Um, <laughs> but write down how you feel when you, you're doing that. And we're at afternoon tea and we're all celebrating with our pins, with our special guest VP. And everyone's looking at your pictures on Facebook because you earned another incentive. And you're part of this amazingness. Write down how that feels, but just you've got, you've got, to, do it, you've got to do it every day. It's every day. Like, it only works from every day. Like, ja I know that Jackie Midgley will be training on stage, like, soon. Because what she's got is exceptional, but I just know that what she's got is in control of here. Since I've met you, you've had one wobble, you won't mind me saying. There was one wobble for about 10 minutes, but then we established it was because she hadn't eaten and she was a bit tired. But other than that, her belief for what she's building is rock solid. I didn't come to the table like that. I've built that over three years. And as a district manager, going area, going region, 
just know you can just build that. We do not all come to the table with that rock solid like Jackie's is. The rest of it, but I, you, you won't mind me saying you work on it every day, don't you, Jackie? Like you don't just expect that it's like that. I know that mine takes work and I know when I'm wobbling and I know who can help me get it back and how I can get it back. I know what I need to do and generally I just need to pick up the phone and ring a prospect. That's generally all I need to do to get myself back. Um, but yeah, that's it. Like, th please don't think that you need to do anything more than just be the best version of you. That's all you've got to do and just do it over and over and over again. I don't have any secrets except from this, Amy Trevor, I've told, I'm waving it round. I wish I'd have read this in the beginning of my business. I've only just read it now three years in. How to Build Network Marketing Leaders by Big Al Schreider and then read anything else by him. They're only this thick. I've read it in two days and then read his next one and read his next one. I'm like devouring it and look, like it's written like that so it's not even a lot of reading. It's genius but basically all he's saying is exactly what I've said right now. You're just going to teach people to do what you do by doing it yourself. That's it. Um, thank you all for taking the time to get on this call with me. I'm going to share it with the rest of the district managers. And let's all bonus. You can. You so can. Love you all tons. See you all soon. Louise Fletcher and Millie, love you very much. Jackie, love you. Emma, I, is it weird to say I love you? I do love you. I know I don't really know you, but I do. And Emma Trevor, oh my God, you know I love you so much. Goodbye.